Welcome back, everybody, to the Catching You podcast. My name is Lacey Ham, one of your co-hosts, and today I will be doing a solo, um, and this one's pretty specific to recruiting since it is September. So for those of you who don't know that September 1st is the first day that um, on your jun- of your junior year of high school, ju- September 1st is the first day that colleges can contact you and reach out to you if they're interested. Um, so want to talk that, talk about that for a little bit today, um, and share my story about my September 1st and my, obviously my recruiting journey and it's a big part of my recruiting journey. Um, so I'm just going to put it all out there. This is my first, I don't know if I've said this on this podcast before, but so I'm just going to lay it out there on September 1st of my junior year. I got zero calls, a big fat zero, actually. <laughs> um, not a nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, actually. So, and at that time, I was on the Athletics Mercado team that I was a part of with Greg Borzileri. And I was actually, no. Who was I with? My junior year, September. I actually don't remember. Anyways, okay. Main point of the story is that I got no calls on September 1st. And obviously I was heartbroken. You know, I went to practice that weekend and a lot of my teammates who are at big schools now, oh my gosh, this coach called me at 12.01 a.m. And I got so many calls at 12.01 and blah, 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 this and that about how they were calling my teammates like five minutes after five minutes when it turned September 1st, when they were legally allowed to talk to juniors in high school. And yeah, obviously I was heartbroken. And I mean, I did not get a call the whole September. Yeah. Like, no calls from any coaches really. And, um, it was devastating because, you know, when the rule changed, you know, when I was a sophomore, I think I was a sophomore when the rule changed, that's all I was looking forward to was September 1st of my junior year and getting ready for those calls and having my notepad out and seeing if anyone was interested, you know? So, um, when I got no calls, that was a little bit of a knife to the gut, if you will. Um, and every day after that was a little bit of turning the knife deeper and deeper into my gut. Um, especially because, um, may I'm not the main type of recruiting, but I was posting videos of myself on Twitter, um, when it was Twitter and, I would post videos of my game highlights and my bullpens and all of this stuff. And, um, I followed a lot of my teammates and a lot of colleges on Twitter because it was my Twitter. My Twitter account was based solely for softball, um, specific, specifically for recruiting. So when September 1st hit, you know, I go on social media, you know, all the colleges were like, happy September 1st, happy September 1st. We're so glad to reach out to you. We're so glad to like pick, pick our school, pick our school. You'd love our program. And they're posting all about it. And then like some girls would even go on Twitter and be like, I'm so grateful for all the calls that I got today. You know, I, I will take it into consideration. Thank you for all the calls. And at, I, I kid you not, maybe a week after September 1st, I deleted Twitter because I could not, obviously I was happy for my teammates. No doubt about that. Props to you for having a coach contact you the minute it turns September 1st. Like, I mean, obviously there's probably some girls this, I mean, it happens every year um, where they get calls in the middle of the night, you know, and they're staying up all night calling all these coaches that are interested in them. But it, it struck something deep down inside me when I'd see these posts and I was part of a very prestigious program where these girls were getting probably 20 to 30 calls within a week 
of September, it turning to September 1st. And I had zero. And it made me question who I was as a player, um, how good I was, my skills, my technique, my mental game. It questioned, I questioned everything about myself for, for probably, I mean, that I, I did, it did change me. It changed who I was as a player because I got no calls and I think it's hard when um, the recruiting world hypes up September 1st a lot uh, when there are girls out there that are probably in the same position as me where they work their butt off to get to where they are today and these obstacles that happen in their journey like say I mean I'm going to quote myself I mean my head injury and then obviously COVID happening during my junior year, um, those ops, there's plenty of different obstacles that people face as well. And for September 1st to be hyped up so much. And I mean, I was, I was expecting at least one call, you know, and honestly, I think I was a part, I was on, yeah, I was expecting at least one call, at least one. And, um, you know, it's hard to think back of like when I was a junior in high school and then March hit, obviously March 2020 when COVID happened and I felt like everything was falling apart. Like my, all these years that I worked my butt off to get to where I am today, to get over my head injury, to, I don't know, just like drive an hour and a half almost four times a week to go to lessons and work out and all this stuff. I felt like it was for nothing. I felt like I was a complete failure. My goal of being a D1 athlete was nowhere near, like nowhere near me. I, I thought that it wasn't plausible because of how September 1st is drawn out to be. So I I want to kind of like I'm kind of speaking to the girls that did probably did not get any calls September 1st and are emailing, are posting on their social media, are going to camps and doing everything that they can to get recruited. And um I want those players to know that September 1st is just a day in the year that somebody can call you and say that they're interested. It's, it does not define who you are as a player. If you get no calls, if you get three calls, if you get no calls, if you get 10 calls, everyone plays the same sport. You're all playing softball at the end of the day and how you choose to go about responding to how many calls you got. It makes a big difference. Um, how you respond after that. Do you shut down completely and say, you know what, softball, it, it just wasn't meant for me. I got no calls on September 1st. No one wants me. And I'm, I'm just really upset. You know, and that's, those were my first thoughts in the first week after I got no calls. Um, and I honestly, I, I honestly felt so alone because I was in an organization where pretty much everyone got calls and that was all they talked about. So, and then I had obviously teammates come up to me, Hey, who did, who called you on September 1st? And it's just, like I said, the knife got plunged deeper inside my stomach. Um, when those questions were asked, I honestly don't remember how I answered those questions or if, even if I did answer because it was such a sensitive subject for me that um September 1st was just this big day of the year where these colleges are going to want you and they're going to want to offer you right away and all these different type of th stuff. But what I want to really like get out of this episode is that I'm kind of speaking to the girls obviously. I'm speaking to the girls that did not get calls or just anything along like that criteria of like 
going back and forth in your head whether you are good enough to play the sport and whether like what what I never questioned was my passion for the game. I never questioned that. And even after this whole September 1st debacle, I never questioned how much I loved softball. Like that was always going to stay the same. And so those girls who are questioning, if if your passion for the game is still high and you you love softball as much as you have the entire time you've played it, then you need to keep going. There's there's that something good is going to come your way. And based on how you respond after September 1st, whether you get calls or you don't, you're still the you're still the competitive fierce awesome player that you are no matter no matter if you get calls or not. And I mean you're still still beginning of your junior year. You still have your two more high school seasons to go. You have two more travel ball seasons to go. There's still there's still time. There's still time. And not to mention how many universities are out there. You know, they 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 preach that I mean go D1, go D1. I mean, yes, D1 is the goal, right? It's always the goal for many, many players. There's many, many D1 schools. There's many, many D2 schools. There's many, many NAIA schools. There's many JUCO schools that filter into D1 schools and could be a cheaper option, you know? And I mean, that's what, I mean, we've, we've gone over this before in this podcast. That's what we were considering was, do I go JUCO first? And then reach out to schools after that because, and then we, and then we, the opportunity at San Jose State came up. Um, But there are opportunities for you as a player anywhere. There is a place for you. Let's just say that there is a place for you to play. Don't take September 1st with take take September 1st with a grain of salt you know and they I mean they hype it up so much I mean the softball world hypes it up so much but when when it has you questioning yourself as a player when you've worked so hard to get to where you are that's kind of where we need to change the mindset a little bit and think you know that's okay I'm gonna continue to work hard and I'm going to reach my goal. If your goal is to play collegiate softball, then you you can you can do it, even if you get no calls. And just as long as you keep working hard and you keep your mindset straight, you continue to go to your lessons, you continue to do your work in the off season, you continue to do extra work outside of that. You know, there is there is a home for everybody. And just wanted to do a short little episode regarding September 1st because of my experience, my whatever, not even an experience because there were no calls. But um, the the one of the main things I want to say is that I felt very alone. I didn't know if I could tell anyone that I... I got no calls. I didn't I didn't want to tell anyone, especially my teammates. Um because I felt like I was I I felt like ashamed of myself. I, like I felt so ashamed of myself because I got no calls, but the more the more I kind of reached out and like talked to my other softball friends that I wasn't on the team with anymore, who I grew up playing with, they're like yeah, like we got no calls. And so what I want to say is that, like, you're not alone. There are plenty of girls out there that also did not get calls and probably will be, uh, probably are in the same situation as you. And I mean, I was one of them. So automatically you're not alone. So just know that you're not alone and please don't question your, your um, definition as a player, your enough you are worth it and there is a place for you to go there's tons of universities out there that will be so accepting of you as a player and as long as you keep working hard and keep up your work ethic and stay passionate about the game so um let's end it there and 
uh, make sure to follow our social medias at Catching You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. And make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a comment. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for listening. And we'll see you on the other side.